What is keeping IT up at night? Well, if you look at the trade headlines and the press and things like that, you'll hear cloud and public cloud and cloud to cloud and hybrid cloud. But really, if you kind of just ask regular IT folks, the core things are still keeping people up. Andrew, I know you guys went out and surveyed a bunch of people, and, and the stuff that you guys found that's keeping people up at night, really, ransomware is a little new, but that's kind of data protection. This stuff has been with us for a long time, right? It has indeed. And it's getting worse and worse now because of the amount of data that people are dealing with. Right? If you were moving from SAN A to SAN B when you had this much data, that was always a problem. Now that it's this much data, it's near impossible. Right, yeah, copying 100 gigs is, is, is an easy thing. Copying a couple petabytes is a real big challenge, right? Yeah. So I know you guys have a solution in this space, so let's, let's kind of talk about that, right? If I have my, if I'm a typical data center today, I probably have some sort of SAN or uh, storage system that has a uh, maybe hybrid at this point or uh, possibly still hard disk drives, and I go out and buy a, a fancy new all flash array. I think the big challenge that a lot of data centers face is what do I do now? Do exactly. I throw that out? How do I get data over to it? How do I make sure the right data gets over to it? I think the all flash array guy wants me to copy it all over to it, but that doesn't make a lot of sense either, does it? Exactly. So what we have is a solution for this, but it's not a migration solution. We're not helping you move from A to B. We're helping you remove the requirement to have migration ever again in the data center. Okay. So you've got your old array. You've got your new all flash array. You put a data fabric around it and treat this as one entity. Okay. You can add new storage in whenever you need to. You can take old storage out whenever it gets old. The data is replicated. The data will be in the right place for the right application workload. It'll continue to work even if you pull out a large SAN. Okay. This is migration gone forever. Okay, so then, so basically what you guys are designing is, is essentially a fabric that, that surrounds my storage, for lack of a better word, because we have two on here, but this could be multiple systems. This could be like a capacity-based uh, system that's not worried about performance, and I can move data around there. Now, do I have to manually go in and do that, or, or do you guys have like a policy engine? It's policy-based. So we call all of this evergreen storage, and what you do is you set up for your applications, could be an application or a group of applications, I need this level of performance, I need this level of capacity or growing capacity, and I need this level of protection and the data will be placed where it needs to be placed to deliver those objectives or tell you when we can't. Okay, now, I, so I get how that covers refresh. Now, I was a little surprised when you said, oh, and we, we help with ransomware. So yeah. explain to me how a fabric helps with ransomware. Well, coming back to that massive amount of data problem, mm -hmm. you ask a lot of people what their number one fear is, it's, is this amount of data that I have actually really backed up? And in a critical issue like ransomware, could I ever recover? Right. So we're a snapshot-based backup solution, but those snapshots are immutable. They're stored in a way that they're not directly accessible by something like ransomware. Okay. They are in an immutable format, so as long as you go back to the moment before ransomware infected you, you can recover. There's other things you'll want to do when you bring them back, right? Immunize the disks, figure out how it is you got ransomware in the first place, Sure. but your data is always there. So you got time to figure that out because you've got a good copy of data. And I think the, one of the big challenges or things we always talk about with ransomware is the recovery effort has to be easier than paying the ransom. Exactly. Right? Because what I see a lot of people is they probably have a backup, but the, the, the effort that they have to go through to get that backup to work, they kind of almost cop out and say, ah, I'll just pay the ransom, right? Where if you can make it easy, that's a big deal. Absolutely. So that takes care of that one. So again, I'm a little confused how um, the fabric helps with availability. Help me with that one. So the entire system, of course, is set up to be highly available. When we talk about availability, it's trying to get people away from the concepts of RTOs and RPOs. There are times when you need them, like ransomware, mm -hmm. but under general day-to-day -day operations, you should be thinking about never being down always on. Right. So that entire fabric, utilizing all of the storage resources and media that you have, and cloud could be in here as well. Mm -hmm. It could be multi-site, it could be multi-cloud. Even if a data center goes down, you should still be available. It's treating your entire data infrastructure in the same way that we used to treat a RAID array. Okay. Something comes out, it still runs. So, so am I basically taking my snapshot copies and making a, a, putting them on another device all the time so that if device A fails, device B is available? What we like to have is multiple copies of your running data okay. and multiple copies of your snapshot saved data elsewhere. Okay, so you got to you got to cover from both angles. At exactly. That okay, so that takes care of availability. Now, cost I actually get right. So, fabric, I, I'm I'm you know going to set policies. I would assume that you know one of these things that always drives me crazy about all flash arrays is the assumption is I'll just copy all my data over to the all flash array. Well, 
80 percent we know that 80 percent of that data hasn't been accessed why fill up an all flash rate exactly to do it? it makes more sense to either keep it there or move it to a capacity system right yep i would assume that you guys have that kind of capability and as the data volumes are growing that 80 percent is getting higher and higher yeah right? you're talking 90 95 percent of the data is written once never touched again that shouldn't be on your all flash array right so when you talk about cost we mentioned that we're policy based. You set your requirements for how big, how fast, how protected for this data mm -hmm. or for this application workload. Right. In the background, we will deliver those objectives using the least cost storage media that we can. Okay. So we will look at the cost for your flash, your hard drives, your cloud, and whatever data is stale or unused, that'll automatically be lowered in the priority. Okay. We will deliver to the objectives that you've set for latency, for IOPS, for bandwidth, utilizing the least cost. And that all happens automatically in the background. And you can get reports back on what these different application workloads are costing you from storage. Okay. And now you can make better business decisions, right? This application, it's costing me a ton of money and I don't use the output very often. Right, okay. There's an easy decision to make. So that takes care of cost. Now the other thing I did want to talk about real quickly because we've mentioned it a couple times is all the new cool stuff that we do see a lot in the trade press and mm -hmm. people are thinking about, you guys aren't necessarily uh, excluded from that either. You mentioned cloud, so we could leverage cloud as a uh, storage destination as well too, right? Absolutely. So for our big 3.0 uh, launch, we focused on availability, evergreen, and protection and the features really support that. So we've expanded to multi-site, multi-cloud capability, which helps both with availability and with Evergreen. Okay. And we've added in uh, a little bit of data artificial intelligence. Okay. A style of swarm intelligence, which is a branch of AI that goes out and automatically balances for each of those application workloads that they get the objectives that they've set. And above that, balance all of them so the entire infrastructure is delivered at least cost. Wow, okay, that's really good. So uh, before we uh, exit out of here, uh, why don't you give the folks that aren't familiar with IO Fabric a little background on what IO Fabric does. Sure, IO Fabric is accompanied by a team that's been together now for, I hate to say it, but about 25 years. Um, we are on the cusp of the transition that storage needs to make, the same sort of transition that Compute made back in the VMware hypervisor days. Right. Individual standalone servers to a Compute Fabric, we take individual storage silos or storage media into a data fabric. Okay. And that's IO Fabric. Great. Well, Andrew, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me.